In the last video, we looked at the effect of each transaction on the accounting equation. We looked at transactions for one year, and we made sure that the accounting equation at the end of the accounting period was in balance. Now I'm going to introduce you to the first financial statement. This is not the first financial statement that we prepare, but it is one of the four required financial statements, and it's the first one I'm going to teach you about because um, it's really easy to understand. The first financial statement you're going to learn about is called the balance sheet. On the left here is the format of a balance sheet, and we'll go through that when we are preparing an actual balance sheet. But just know that the balance sheet is one of the four required financial statements. The balance sheet shows assets, liabilities, and stockholders' equity at a point in time, typically the last day of the accounting period. So, it's a snapshot of the company's financial position at any given point in time. When you're preparing the balance sheet, you will be preparing a balance sheet for typically month-end, quarter-end, or year-end. Let's go work on that example that we just completed. In the previous video, we looked at a company that was formed on January 1st, year one, and we looked at all the transactions they had during the year, and then we looked at how each of those transactions affected the accounting equation. Then, at the end of the accounting period, we totaled all the assets, liabilities, equity, made sure that the accounting equation was in balance. Now, Let's go ahead and prepare a balance sheet with this information. Here is a sample balance sheet. I've cut and pasted the balance sheet so that when we are preparing the balance sheet, you can see what the format is going to look like. Let me move that a little further down. So here's, again, the information that we did in our previous question, and I'm going to prepare a balance sheet with this information. In this balance sheet, the first thing that you need to see is that we have some header information. So this information is called the header information. And the header information will always be there in your formal financial statements. And the header information will always appear in this order. The first line is always company name. The second line is always the name of the statement. The third line is always going to be the date. And that's going to be the header information for all the four financial statements we're going to learn. So the first one, let's go ahead and prepare it here. Our company was called ABC Company. So I'm going to say ABC Company. That's the name of the company. This is the balance sheet. So I'm going to write out balance sheet. And then the date. The date is going to be a point in time. So it's just going to be one day. In this particular example, we were looking at a company that was just formed on January 1st, year one. And we did the transactions for a whole year. So the date that we're looking at is December 31st, year one. So there's your header information for your balance sheet. Now let's go ahead and prepare the balance sheet. The first thing we're going to list out is our assets. So let's type the header assets. And then we're going to go through typically assets in the order of liquidity. Liquidity means the ease of converting items to cash. Cash is the most liquid asset. So the first thing we're going to list is cash. So how much cash did this company have? If you look at the first column, let me move this up a little. The first column is cash. And if you look at the total, our cash at the end of the period was 237,000. So let's go ahead and list that amount, 237,000. And we got that from this number here. Now, next asset. 
we only have one more asset that's land and our land is 60,000 so we're going to show 60,000 here now if you look at this format there are lots of other different assets we list we would list all the different assets here but if an asset a company doesn't own an asset it's not going to be shown on their balance sheet so these are the only two assets that ABC company has as of December 31st year one so we are done what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line here and then we're going to say total assets are equal to we add these two numbers and we get 297,000 and then we're going to put a double line there because this is a total with the last number we're not going to add any number to total assets so that's why there is a double line now in the next section we're going to list liabilities with liabilities right now there's only one you only have notes payable of 200,000 so I'm going to say notes payable And since it's only one, I don't need to indent it and extend the total column. I'm just going to extend it out and just write 200,000 here because it's only one liability. If you had multiple liabilities, you would list them individually here and then do a subtotal like just like we did for assets. Now we're done with liabilities. Next is stockholders equity. Let me scroll down just a little bit. stockholders equity we know only has two items it has common stock now what's our common stock our common stock was 80,000 so since we have two items in our stockholders equity again I'm going to indent it I'm going to put that in the inside column 80,000 then the second thing was retained earnings and our retained earnings as of December 31st is 17,000 so I'm going to list that as 17,000 then the next line item is these two total together we call that total stockholders equity Sorry, that's the next part of the question. So, total stockholders equity. Is $97,000. And then the final number, again, that's two double lines, is total liabilities and stockholders equity. I'm abbreviating, but you shouldn't abbreviate. You should always write it out since it's a formal financial statement. So that's 297,000. So one thing I want to point out, let me put a line here too so it looks more neater. One thing I want to point out is the balance sheet is where you have your accounting equation. Assets are going to equal liabilities and stockholders' equity. Always, 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 when you're preparing your balance sheet, your total assets section has to equal your total liabilities and stockholders equity if they're not equal that means you have not prepared your balance sheet correctly or you have not recorded your transactions correctly when you're initially learning about the balance sheet and the financial statements it's always good to have a format next to you so that you follow the format until get you until you get used to what's on each financial statement before we move on to the next section I do want to point out something else let me draw a timeline so here's a timeline sorry that's not straight but we, this company was formed on January 1st, year one. So we 
identified all the transactions, and then we prepared the balance sheet on December 31st, year one. Our very next day is January 1st, year two. And we have a new accounting period that will begin on January 1st, year two. And then at the end of that accounting period on December 31st, year two, we will prepare another balance sheet. When we are looking at transactions for the next year, we're going to do the same thing we did. We're going to look at transactions just like these. We're going to analyze them. But now that we're in the second year, our beginning balances of cash, land, notes payable, common stock, and retained earnings will be these ending balances. So let me scroll down, show you the question we'll be working on in the next example. When we work on year two transactions, our first line will have the beginning balances of cash, land, notes payable, common stock, and retained earnings that we ended year one with. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, please let me know.